Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hello everyone, it's Becky Brown, not Steve Arterburn. I know you miss him all, and we do too, and we look forward to having him back. And uh, But we also have Mylon Yurkovich and Dr. Jill Hubbard with us today. Hey. Hey guys. It's great to be back as so, well. I, yes, we have missed you, Mylon. So yeah, yes, I was, we have. I was on a staycation. So yes, yes you were, you know, weren't so, you? Yeah, not the kind so. that you like, but the, we're no, just glad you're back. That's, that's okay, I'm just glad to be here. Well, you know, one of the things that I'm looking forward to is where um, New Life is going to do the first ever parenting conference. We're mm-hmm. going to do a parenting conference on October 2nd. It's online called mm-hmm. Fearless Parenting. And Mylon, I know you and Kay are going to be part of that. And we're going to talk about all kinds of things concerning parenting. Parenting in the 21st century is a little bit different mm-hmm. than what it was in the 20th, but there are some things that don't ever change. And I think we're going to talk about some of that as well. But um, did either of you do it perfectly? You both raised children. They're out of your home <laughs> from the first part. <laughs> <laughs> almost. I'm almost there. <laughs> That's the home stretch. Well, well, there were two questions. You know, did we do it perfectly? And then uh, are we, are no, we out so of the much. role? And <laughs> You know, I, I I joke and say, you know, I have four kids and they each had a different dad. Yes, uh, yes. Because the first three, which were fairly close together, um, we were brand new neophyte parents and we just <laughs> did not know what we were doing. And um, we were under a lot of different influences as to how to parent, et cetera, et cetera. And we've, we've apologized to our kids for that. Yeah, you know? too. And we literally have. And mm-hmm. we've had conversations. Mm-hmm. And uh, so um, you have to be well, a growing parent, which yeah, is absolutely. what we say. It's a and, growing parent and aware and being willing to listen to your kid and how I make you feel as, a, as my right. child. And life happens mm-hmm. along the road during our kids' childhoods mm-hmm. that are unexpected. And mm-hmm. so we have to deal with those kinds of things, too, things that we didn't expect would be thrown into our parenting. And you know, none of us grow up in the same family. Your Mm -hmm. siblings had different parents than you did and your position in the family makes a difference. Mm -hmm. But like you said, Mylon, as parents, uh, hopefully we're growing Mm -hmm. and that's what we're hoping to do on that day. So if you'd like to join us for a one day, we're gonna have the breakout groups and everything just like normal. And even if you're a grandparent, maybe, maybe you'd like to know a little bit more about what parenting in the 21st century is like, cause it's a different thing. Um, you can call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and, or you can go to newlife.com and you can see the information there. But we're looking forward to a great day. So many times over the years on this show, specifically, how many calls do we get where they say, my mother or my dad used to, right? And uh, I've said more than once to my own children, I will pay for any therapy you need because I was your mom. Okay, yeah. so we're just going to get that out of the <laughs> <Exactly>. way. <laughs> but I know, Mylon, you have talked about, you and Kay both have talked about how you have gone to your children and in their adult years and talked about those things where you might need to make amends. And I also mm-hmm. think that's really powerful as well. But so many parents don't know, don't have the tools on how to do that. But uh, maybe this one day workshop would be the thing for somebody to come and learn a little bit more about how to raise good people. So we're, we're doing the best we can to give you the information that you need to have a, a new life, no pun intended. Uh, any there, other there's, <laughs> there's a, a person from a hundred some odd years ago, Donald Winnicott, and he oh, was yeah. he was a, um, a really a pediatrician, a pediatrician and a, and a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know what? We want to be good enough parents. We Love don't have that. to be perfect. We just actually need to it's be, optimal to be it, good enough. Being that, perfect is not that optimal. That is right. It is not a good thing to try to be perfect or expect your kid to be, but to be good enough. And maybe we can talk about that a little bit more later as well. I love it. I love it. We'll be right back after this break answering your calls. I came into this thinking 
that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Dallas, Texas, October 15th to the 17th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Artemer. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. And New Life's group counselors will help you focus on the area that will benefit your marriage most. To register or to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Here at this workshop, we had our first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-NEW. L-I-F-E. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back. We are so glad you are here and we are answering your calls and we are going to talk to John who's calling us from Boise, Idaho and listens on the app and you can listen on the app too. You can download it for free wherever you get your app for your phone and uh, you get all kinds of resources, not, not just New Life Live, but you can get uh, articles and tips and all kinds of things. But enough about that. John, how can we help you? Uh, yes, uh I, my question is, um, uh, uh, we got, uh, I got uh, problems with uh, intimacy with my wife. Okay. And, uh, of course, I think that uh, for me is very normal. I'm uh, 81 years old, and uh, she's uh, 45, and I cannot perform anymore. And uh, and she does. <laughs> okay. So I don't know how to uh, resolve this problem. So All right. I, I need your advices. Well, we'll try to help as much as we can. Mylon or Jill, what would you like to offer, John? You know, we talk about this in our <clears throat> intimacy workshop um, that we do with New Life and then also in our intimacy intimacy workshops we do separately from new life that life has different phases to it and with with time and aging there is loss um and this these are one of the things we have to to learn to adapt to so your question john is a great question because you're really asking how what i need advice how can we adapt what do we have to do at this particular point and so um, thank you for your call, um, but certainly with, with the 35-year age difference between well, the two of you. Well, and can I just you, ask yes. real quick, how long have you been married, John? Yeah, John. Uh, 15 years. And so, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, up to about a year and a half ago, uh, we've been uh, really, really active uh, okay. sexually. Yeah. Oh, okay, so this is not a first marriage for either one of you. Well, no, it's first marriage for her. Okay. Uh, this is my third marriage. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. So the, the, the answer, the part of the answer to your question, John, is what do we do? And <clears throat> sometimes intercourse is not something that we can continue to maintain for a variety of different reasons both for female comfort and as well as for male uh, perhaps inability uh, to perform in that respect. But nurturance, um, love, physical touch, fulfilling sexual touch can take place without sexual intercourse. And it's important to negotiate what both people are willing to do to ensure that uh, when they are in a position of having intimacy that both people feel as fulfilled as possible. And that's the goal here. And uh, that's the only thing you can do uh, besides uh, walking away from it all. And that's not a goal either because 
love, nurturance, support, mm-hmm. physical touch, care. Um, emotional connection. Emotional connection, I mean, it's Jill. part of what makes the, the sexual intimacy so meaningful mm-hmm. for a woman and a man. Because as you age emotionally, you actually become closer in your emotional makeup to, to your wife. And so there can be a, a great, rich, deep um, emotional connection. I'm hoping, John, or assuming that you have been to doctors. I mean, since it's just been in the last year and a half that you have explored all the options to help further your sexual activity. And if you haven't, I would suggest that you do that because while not everyone can stay sexually active, some people can um, well into well into their 80s. And so that, that would be an important piece to all of this. Also, I'm curious what your wife married someone 35 years older than her. Did you guys talk about the aging process? What it would be like as the decades moved on? What your expectations were? How you would navigate? Obviously, you getting older before her. We uh, we talked about uh, uh, the age difference uh, when we were uh, going out before we got married, mm-hmm. and she uh, she said that uh, she didn't care. She knew that uh, I was going to get older first, and uh, uh, she was expecting this. Uh, and uh, you were talking about, uh, uh, I mean, intercourse is not uh, the only thing that you can do mm-hmm. uh, to satisfy uh, the partner. And, and that's what I've uh, been doing, you know. I, uh, I, you know, I do a lot of touching and uh, uh, talking and, uh, you know, uh, caress her and this and that. And she's pretty happy so far. But I'm, I feel sorry for her, you know. She's pretty young. Mm. So that's, I think that's the bigger question. Mm-hmm. I was wondering, you know, in, in every marriage, there are lots of different layers, right? And so this is one aspect. But, you know, John, that's concerning that you feel sorry for her. That, that would be concerning to me. But I would want you to have a conversation with her and to hear what she has to say about it. And I'm, it sounds like you're pretty open with each other, right? Yes, we are. We are. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when you've asked fact, her that, uh, um, okay. as a matter of fact, uh, uh, when we talk, I, I, I ask her, uh, how do you feel about uh, me not uh, performing anymore? She says, uh, I, I don't care, you know, uh, because our beliefs, you know, uh, according to the Bible, we, we, we're, we're going to be together forever. Mm-hmm. I love you and I know you love me and, and that's what counts. But still, I back in my mind, you know, I, I, I kind of worry about her. Okay, so yeah. we, that's the that's well, the conversation. I think. Go ahead, Jill. Sorry. Well, well, and John, it sounds like she um, is very positive in her commitment to you, and her love for you, and even navigating the for better or worse situation. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if it and makes you. That. Feel, I, I'm wondering if it makes you feel insecure. You're worried about her, but is it an insecurity in not being able to perform? Can you trust her love for you? Can you allow that I do. to touch your heart? I do, I, I do trust her. Uh, uh, she, is, she loves the Lord. I love the Lord. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I feel that, I mean, she's pretty young, and uh, she should be uh, uh, enjoying more of it uh, than what she does right now. I mean, just touching and, and, and but talking what if, and that. But what if I, that I is, that's enough. What if it is enough for her? What if there are other things that are more important? Men don't always get that the emotional connection for women is, you know, trumps the sexual um, intimacy. That it, That is sexual intimacy for a woman. 
that yes. that m- more women can go without um, the physical execution of sex than men can. Men are just wired differently. Yes. They don't think that way. Women mm-hmm. are not so much into a man's performance in bed that way. It's about the connection between yeah. the two of you. Yeah. So, so what... What you're saying, Jill, is there can be an emotional satisfaction. Absolutely. With the closeness, the nurturance, the touch Mm -hmm. that creates a satisfying experience Mm -hmm. to the female that feels differently than it would perhaps to a male. Right. So and that's very important, John. You're, You're feeling sorry for her. And part of your feeling sorry for her is you looking through the male lens, which is very natural. Jill is explaining the female lens to you. And um, that the female, if there's enough nurturance, love, and support and connection, they can feel remarkably well. Right. Do you know what I think is even a more important aspect of this, John? You're calling because of this age difference. But there are couples all across the world that have this same issue, Mm -hmm. and they're maybe the same age. And so we're talking about really creating a good, solid connection um, between you two as a couple. The physical comes at a different place or a different way, but the the connection that you have is going to be really important because if you continue to pity her or not believe her when she says that this is fine or this is good, that's going to create other issues as well. Um, I think it's a yeah. I'm I'm I think it's great that you're calling and that you love her so much that you want to you know make this right, but I think it's also important to listen to her and to mm-hmm. hear what she's having to say. I think um, I'm going to send him a copy of How We Love, and I would, I would even encourage you guys to come to the workshop as Mylon was talking about it before. You know, we we can learn something no matter what our age or stage in life is, and uh, I love that you you called John um, just to ask this. This is great. Um, you know, um, I just finished a short paper. Um, and the title of the paper is The Male Stargazer's Guide to His Wife's <laughs> Sexual Galaxy. <laughs> and um, Perfect. John needs that, Mylon. Yes. When needs is it going to be out? <laughs> and send it to John. Well, it, it'll be on our new website in a couple of weeks. But it is to your point, Jill, that men, and here's where men and women are very different. The attachment styles, they can react similarly. An avoidant mm-hmm. male is similar to an avoidant female. Mm-hmm. But from the hormonal perspective, they are wired, to use your word, very, very different. And um, if men uh, do not understand the female wiring, that they are built toward nurture, they are built toward um, the anticipation of of children, and they have a fluctuation of a dozen hormones over a 28-day cycle, and then men are left with a drip drip, drip of testosterone. Mm -hmm. It's a very different experience. Mm -hmm. And so this paper is an attempt to help men understand just what you said, Jill. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thanks, Milo. I'm glad you're doing that work. We're going to talk to Angie, who's calling us from Clearwater, Florida, and she listens on the app and you can listen there too, just like I said earlier. Hi, Angie. How can we help you today? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Of course. My, um, a little background and then my question. My husband is currently receiving TMS therapy, which is transcranial magnetic stimulation. It's a seven to eight week series. You go Monday through Friday <clears throat> for seven to eight weeks. After the first two, he's right in the middle. After the first two weeks, we had a follow up with um, not the doctor, but the doctor's assistant. Uh, it's a private psychiatrist's office. And when we first began this, we met with the psychiatrist, and we were told, it, uh, number one, my husband is an ideal candidate because he's been on antidepressants for many years, almost 30, hmm. and yet and many different ones, and they weren't working. So he's the ideal candidate. So we began it on July 12th, <clears throat> but the psychiatrist told us at the beginning it has an 80% success rate. The people that it doesn't help, those 20%, are mainly for two reasons. 
um, an overwhelmingly stressful life situation or being unstable emotionally. So that was a red flag for me because both of those, in my opinion, are occurring. Uh, but we went uh, after two weeks. It was a follow-up, not with the doctor, but the assistant. And I was in on that appointment. Okay, hold um, on. I, hold I, on, I, Angie. We're gonna. You can hear the music. We're going to go to a break. And this is a very important um, topic. Um, and it's obviously we want to get your question and get more details after the break. Um, so many new treatments for depression, for mental illness, um, and we are so thankful for all of them. Um, but there's always questions about how, how best to serve our loved ones. So we'll talk about that when we get back. It had become very apparent that some of the things I was involved with were taking over my life. In today's world, men are barraged with inappropriate content and images all day, every day. Some say that certain behaviors are just no big deal. It's just part of being a guy. But it's simply not true. It's a battleground for every man, and the opportunities to fail are everywhere. The New Life Every Man's Battle online workshop can help. After seven years, he just one weekend, a completely changed man. For over 20 years, New Life Ministries has been helping men regain their integrity and purity through their one-of-a-kind Every Man's Battle workshop. He said, you know, I think this is something that every man should go to married dating it was definitely life-changing now the workshop is coming to houston september 10th through the 12th don't wait for him to call to find out more call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to newlife.com 1-800-NEW-LIFE Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back. It's Becky Brown with Dr. Jill Hubbard and Mylon Yurkovich, and we're talking to Angie. And Angie, um, you were telling us about your husband is... Uh, receiving some treatment for uh, long-term depression. Uh, go ahead and continue and, and offer your question, and let's see how we can help you. So when we met with the, um, the uh, assistant after the two weeks, I was in that meeting, and, I, and it, it was going pretty well. He seemed slightly improved. But I asked a question of, of the um, assistant um, about therapy, counseling for my husband, because he's pretty much isolated himself over the years. And uh, her answer was, it's, you know, that's great. Therapy's great, but only when the person getting the therapy is engaged. So I get that. I understand that. <clears throat> but however, here's my question. I'm wondering if I, if it would be appropriate to send an email to the doctor and the assistant, um, to explain more of the situation because they are unaware of the overwhelming stressful life situation. And I don't know if it's appropriate, but I do know that if I were to, we have another follow-up appointment on Thursday, and I do know that if I were to bring it up in that appointment with my husband present, I do know that he would be upset. Mm. Um, and so I just, you know, he's 75 years old. Mm. He's been retired 15 years, but he, the first year was basically, you know, left out on disability, and I am still working. I'm 10 years younger, and, um, 
the overwhelming situation is during that 15 year period, he was like very involved with muscle cars and he built a, a small collection, but he really wanted to fabricate parts for the cars. And so he bought parts, materials, equipment, tools, all different things. It was all in a um, building that was on my daughter and her husband's property. But a year ago, the property uh, was sold. They had to move out of state for my son-in-law's job. My husband knew one year in advance the property was going to be sold, but he did nothing to make arrangements for moving mm. all of this stuff. So now we have two storage units okay. for all of this stuff, <clears throat> and it's just overwhelming, and I know he's thinking it. Plus, the overflow has been in our house for over right. a year now, filling up the foyer part of the family room. I think we get a good picture. I think we get a good picture, Angie. A lot of times when depression is uh, present... It's very hard to make decisions, but it's also very hard for the loved ones of those who are dealing with the depression to advocate because there's a lot of restrictions of what you can and can't say or what, you know, what you have access to. And so your concern is, how do I let the doctor who's treating him know what reality is like? Uh, Jill, Mylon, well, what would you... And, and, it, and I don't even know if they really will care because their part is just get, to give this therapy. I mean, right. they're not doing the counseling right. or anything. Right. But, I mean, I feel they should care because the goal is to get him better. And I wondered if they knew, if they could understand. Okay. Well, and usually a, a little bit of information is helpful for a psychiatrist. And often patients don't reveal what it's like to actually be around them. They don't see it in the same way family members see it. Um, I'm also hearing, Angie, that your husband has lost wh what he did to fill his time. His hobby um, is no longer in place. And so that would certainly add to his depression and, and would be very relevant. Um, I'm wondering why your husband would be angry with you for sharing isn't the goal for to help him to help him to get better sounds like right. there so may be another piece of okay here's another piece of info on our trip back from the first appointment with the psychiatrist after we learned that the 20 percent that don't get helped what are the reasons he spoke to me in the car right i'm dri i'm driving all the time and he uh feels like the main stressful thing in his life is our marriage relationship and the fact that in his opinion um, and he has told me that I have NPD so which I totally disagree with and anybody that knows me would disagree with that but that's that's where he was coming from so it was like he didn't mention the overwhelming storage unit situation and the crap in our house for one year that he didn't mention. He mentioned our relationship. And so he wanted a commitment from me that during this time, we, you know, we wouldn't have any arguments or anything like that. So I committed to that. But unfortunately, last night, you know, things just got emotional. And I raised my voice. He raised his voice. Mm -hmm. And we had a bad situation. He does not recuperate or bounce back from stuff like that. So, right. Um, you know, he left me a note on the kitchen counter <clears throat> this morning I saw it as I was leaving for work. And uh, it's just not rational. Like when mm -hmm. we were having the conversation, I said, look, I'm done with the conversation. I've already <laughs> lost my cool and I'm done with the conversation. But his response is, okay, so you're done with this marriage. You're done with this relationship. So he's hearing things right? in extremes. And I'm, like, yeah. and I'm like, no, that's not what I so said. So part of this so is dealing with the things that are stressors, not just with this psychiatrist, but actually doing some things. You mentioned therapy. That would be a good way to deal with stress. Or do and I've mentioned that to him, but his pushback is always, um, he's had a lot of insomnia as well. Uh, it's gotten better since the psychiatrist prescribed so, one other thing for him. So Angie, he here's the, here's the he challenge. He appointments or keep them. Right. So here's the challenge. Anytime you have somebody who's struggling with depression, there are ripple effects that occur in relationships, in day-to-day -day functioning. There's irrational thinking and it causes so many more problems. And so just like you just said, Jill, the issue isn't about telling the psychiatrist. It's really about getting help for the two of you together. We'll be right back. 
I have a 15 year old. She is very defiant, rude, and disrespectful to me. Children don't come with a set of instructions, so what's a parent to do? She has very intense screaming fits. Do you feel equipped to tackle the tough decisions and issues that can have a lifelong impact on your kids? I have a 11 year old daughter, and I'm trying to help her with the situation regarding school. Are your children ready to thrive in this culture? I just feel like I'm at the end of my rope with her. Let New Life's online one day workshop, Fearless Parenting, Preparing for the Teen years help. It's Saturday, October 2nd. You'll learn about bullying, discipline, boundaries, challenges in parenting, smartphones, social media, and screen time, how your own struggles affect how you parent, and much more. With insightful teaching and the guidance of a credentialed New Life counselor, this one-day workshop can equip you to meet the challenges of raising children in the 21st century. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to register or to find out more. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I did go to take your life back. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that it not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the New Life member thank you gift of the New Life Journal, 100 Days of Peace, Seven Ways to Choose Healing, Growth Has No Boundaries, a Restoration Bible, and a New Life Grocery Tote to hold it all. Plus, there are ongoing benefits, like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back. We are talking with Angie and um, Mylon and I would love for you to speak into the challenges that mm -hmm. they're having in their marriage. Well, Angie, thank you for your call. And what you're describing is, is very difficult. And really this falls into the category and I don't want to sound too remedial, but this kind of falls into the category of what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Um, because I've seen many depressed people that are languishing after years of a very difficult marriage. And you can say, well, they suffer with depression, but why do they suffer with depression or anxiety or other things? Um, many times it's because we have a chronically upsetting, disruptive relationship. And I, I am really and non-compatible and non-rewarding. I'm really happy, although it's sad, that your husband said, look, one of the things that is unstable in my life is our marriage. And then he is name, naming you or labeling you as narcissistic personality disorder what I really think you guys need to do is, and, and, and I'll digress and also say that I'm a bit disappointed that a psychiatrist didn't do a better job of asking a thorough set of questions mm -hmm. that they could help direct you into more profitable or additional things that would also be complementary to what they're doing. But I think the three of us here would agree uh, that to get into couples work with someone who specializes in couples who can really help the two of you see what's going on and the value of having a couple in your office is you get to watch them pinging off each other and you begin to watch the dynamic and then it's clear to the therapist what each person is bringing and of course what each person is bringing is their history uh, and their reactivity and the things that are a part of their lives. So Angie, to get into couples therapy and to not just send each other off to get the things fixed that the other person mm -hmm. needs to fix, it's so critical that you guys do something together. He's 72, you're 61, something like that. 75. 75 65. and 65. Just jump in so the last 10, 15, 20 years can be great years, right. which can happen if you get in with the right therapist and come to one of our new life. Gosh, yes. in, 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 in de 
just next two it's months from October. now. It's a great October. jump start. It's a great And you'll have the support mm-hmm. of other couples, a whole therapy team, and great information. Right. So it's not just we're there with a therapist an hour a week. Right. And all they have to do is get on a plane in Tampa St. Pete, which is ni- mm-hmm. next to Clearwater, and fly to Dallas because that's where go. the next mm. workshop is going to be. And Thanks be for that there. plug, Mom. Yep. And, I, <laughs> and I think when you hear a depressed person and uh-huh. you acknowledge some of their pain, that helps to give them hope. Yep. That's right. Right? That's right. We will send you a copy of Understanding and Loving a Person with Depression. Um, I think it's, you know, part of the, the puzzle that you're putting together. But I would love to see you come uh, to the workshop in October in Dallas. Uh, Before I go to the next call, I just want to say thanks for um, all of those who are giving to the ministry. New Life survives because of giving hearts like yours. And um, for a gift of any amount this month, we will give you a copy of Understanding and Loving Your Child with ADHD. As we uh, head into the school year, you might uh, hear about that a little bit when homework doesn't get lost or whatever. Um, But I know that it will be of encouragement to you as a parent, and maybe even if you have thought that you might have ADHD, it could probably give you some insight as well. But you can just give us a call at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to newlife.com throughout the month of August. We're going to take another call, and we are going to talk with Sylvia, who is calling us from Las Vegas, Nevada. She listens on the app, and uh, Sylvia, we're glad you called. How can we help you today? Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. I, um, I've i had this problem for a long time. I guess you could say I'm an enabler. I shoot my mouth before I think about it, and I help. I've helped my children, my grandchildren, and sometimes I think it's not help. It's enabling them to, to not become responsible for themselves. Hmm. And it's like, how do I stop this? This is a, it's like a cycle. And and before you know it, when I've said, oh, okay, I'll help you, I realized, oh, I did it again. And mm-hmm. once I've said it, it's like I don't want to go back on my word because then it's like, well, that's not right. I shouldn't go back on my word. If I was going to help, I'll help. I should just do it. But well, recently I started thinking, you know, instead of helping them, am I really helping them or am I enabling them? Those are really and good that's questions. that's hard for me to discern. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the things to ask yourself, Sylvia, is Mm -hmm. am I doing for someone what they need to do for themselves and actually are capable Mm -hmm. of doing for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. As certainly a grandparent, it's nice to do nice things. But is this out Mm -hmm. of your need? Does this somehow keep you connected to them? Is this um, conveying a message perhaps that you don't want to convey, which would be you're not capable And it's a great gift when we allow people to do things and we show them that we trust them to handle something. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that's, I think, the missing piece here for you and some of your relationships. And and to Mm -hmm. also be looking, okay, so why do I jump in? What is my need in all of this? Well, and I was just thinking, Sylvia, why now? If this has been a historical habit of yours, where has this caused? Yes. Where has this caused you problem lately? Well, you know, back to giving. I love to give. I give to New Life. I give to several Thank places you. to my church and so forth. And I, I started thinking, look at all this money I gave to so and so, and I could have gave more to church, the church or to the ministry. And I'm thinking, there's something wrong with this. I need to really take a good look at this. I, I need to, I need to really. Um, ask for help so that I can, you know, stop just jumping in. Sometimes they, my children, whoever, they don't even ask. I know their situation, and I'll, you know, they have this 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 thing called Zell. I'll just sell them the money. Oh, I have extra mm-hmm. money. I'm just going to sell them some money, and I send them the money. And then I think about it, and I go, Why did I do that? Why am I doing that? So, and and, and I think lately. Too much, you know? Can, can I give you my? Anyway. Can I give you my Zell account information, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, too. Sylvia? Please. Um, Sylvia. Actually, no. actually, <laughs> actually You're such a uh, nice no, please, no, I'm not going to give it to you. Okay, no. Sylvia. <laughs> he, 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 here's the thing to work on. Another word for yeah. enabler and giver is rescuer, 
And the question is, That's what am, yeah. the, the question is, who am I rescuing? And mm. I'd like to suggest you're rescuing your negative emotions. You're mm. you're rescuing mm. your discomfort so that you don't mm-hmm. have to watch another person be uncomfortable. Mm. Yes, I said you nailed it. That'll preach. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's important. Mm-hmm. And then the way we work on that is by asking, mm-hmm. how, where did that come from? Now, I don't need you to answer that right at the moment. But if you really want to mm-hmm. work on that, you need to ask the question, from what did I need to be rescued? And and mm-hmm. when was I distressed? And how anxious have I been? And what, was I stuck in places that I couldn't get out of? And what what is my history? And undoubtedly, mm-hmm. that has some elements of trauma or neglect or hurt or abuse, even or abandonment, or, or, or even or, indulgence. Did people or, or, help or, me or not help me? Or overly I indulgent, perhaps. Mm-hmm. But the idea that whoever is in need is suffering, I see the suffering that makes me agitated or anxious or something. So I give to them to ease my own pain. I believe there's a place you could do some searching, Mm -hmm. but don't just look at the present behavior and say, you know, stop it or, you know, I'm, you know, just stop it. I need to ask (laughs) what's the history of it Mm -hmm. and go back and and, and grieve the past, Mm -hmm. get angry at the past and be able to acknowledge the reality of my past. Hmm. Wow. Sylvia, I'm so glad you called because that statement that Mylon just made, rescuing your negative Mm -hmm. emotions will be a new bumper sticker for me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to send you a copy of how we love and, um, that there, the soul word list could really give you Mm -hmm. some insight, Mm -hmm. Sylvia, or anybody Mm -hmm. who's listening, you know, it is really being able to identify what your feeling is or what your feelings are Mm -hmm. in any given situation. And so many times we are just checked out. We're feeling things and reacting to things and we just don't realize um, how they're operating our whole life. Uh, On another subject altogether different, not not anything that's going to be reactive is uh, the Life Recovery Today TV program that's on every Thursday. We have a new episode every Thursday on NRB, but you can also watch it online. Um, we have today's episode is Steve and I, we talked about the 12 laws and 12 gifts of life recovery. And you might be curious as to what does that even mean? It's really about the ripple effects of working recovery. The gifts that come from working a recovery program or just the consequences, the laws that occur as a result of following a recovery program. I think that you'll enjoy it. If you want more information, you can go to liferecoverytoday.net. See you in a minute. my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. 
God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back. I don't know that we say thank you enough for all of you who support the ministry, and I want to say a big thank you. Know that every dollar that you send makes a difference in the lives of so many people. And we're very um, good stewards of everything that you send. Um, Mylon can attest to that. We <laughs> we talk about that all the time. Mm-hmm. But it makes, it. there is a different life across the country, across the world, because of your giving to New Life. We're um, helping people every day. We've been doing it for over 30 years and hope to continue to do that. And, and Becky, and- I, I think the thing that people don't understand is we they hear this radio show on what appears to be commercial radio Mm -hmm. um, and on other stations and and shows where they push a button and they hear a voice and they have sponsors and they have commercials Uh, but we have to pay Christian radio all of the shows on Christian radio have to pay for that airtime right and so uh, it's not like just send the money and where does it go to and it goes down some drain or hole someplace it costs millions of dollars a year to put this Mm -hmm. show on the radio and that's just really important for people to understand well and the more that our listeners will share um that they listen to new life live whether Mm -hmm. that is on any social media account that you follow us on because we're on all those different platforms but at youtube if you're watching us on youtube subscribe and share um I also think it's kind of great. You can go back and look at all the different um, programs uh, and maybe learn something that, you know, there might be a question that will answer a problem that you have. But we are here for you and um, you're here for us. So we appreciate your support. And uh, if you have any questions or how to give, you can go to newlife.com or you can call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and we will help you give to New Life. It's awesome. Uh, We're going to go to Hannah. She's going to be our last call today. And we're so glad you... Hung on. Hannah is calling us from Boise, Idaho, listens on KBXL. Hi, Hannah. I'm glad you called. How can we help you? Um, Yes, I'm trembling just talking to you because it's fearful for me to speak out. But Hmm. um, after 46 years of marriage, I just, um, I was rescued from it. And it was abusive to, um, I could tell you thousands of stories, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't make a difference um but it was it was um my question is um this person was uh, an art teacher and had a very very high profile and then suddenly um went to be a prepper and i followed because i wanted to obey christ in the marriage vow i made a vow to him Mm. as well and then I realized I didn't understand it was an abusive situation and was rescued out of it. But because he was an art teacher and I used to be good at watercoloring, I am so frozen. Mm. I cannot seem to watercolor again. I haven't watercolored for probably a decade because I hear his voice about mm. the criticisms of mm. everything that I was being taught by other people and and watercolor classes so i can't seem to do it and i want to so bad and i don't know why i'm frozen or stuck mm. and i'm I know so that sorry seems trivial but it's but it's no a very it, hannah it's part of my life yeah and that creative process is usually a place where people nurture themselves and um and and grow in so many ways it's very life-giving but for you it's sounds like it's been associated with the abuse Art is synonymous with this abusive yeah. relationship. And because of I that... I want it to be, yeah. Of course, of course, because it, you loved art prior to meeting your husband. Hmm. But in that, yeah. in something that you loved and you were drawn together in, became something very ugly and, and, and not artful, right? Very, very distressing. Right. I just hear his voice. Mm-hmm. And... And it was a stress release for me, but because um, he felt um, entitled to to just 
put me down so that he would be that you you said that uh, you got voice. yeah you said that you got rescued has that involved any any help any work on the trauma yes, that you've yes. experienced I've gone to christian counseling for many years and um ptsd because up until mm -hmm. Um, a few weeks ago, I wasn't able to even drive north because it, mm. you know, I, it was towards that location. Mm. And so I had to stay in, in this area and mm -hmm. fly out only because I didn't, I could not, I would start to vomit. And so they did PTS mm. on me for that. But, um, so you're not I only guess. frozen in your artwork, you've had to work in a lot of areas yeah. there. Mylon, oh, what maybe. would you... Yeah, you what, can't even imagine the abuse. Yeah. My children Hannah, even went oh, through it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Mylon, what would you offer Hannah as we are coming close to the end of the program? I want to offer her help. Well, I trust you, anything. Mm -hmm. Well, continuing what Jill was saying, Hannah, first of all, I'm very sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but when we are anxious, depressed, and traumatized, <clears throat> our the freedoms that allow us to be creative are are stifled they're yeah. they're imprisoned themselves and so um i always question the types of counseling that people are going through when somebody says i'm going to christian counseling that can be good but we also need to find people that are expertly trained in trauma work um emdr mm -hmm. uh, somatic work um, in addition to the PTSD work you might be doing. Um, What's somatic work? Well, you see, you're feeling all this in your body. Mm -hmm. you, you, you throw yeah. up, and your body mm -hmm. is, is having physical reactions, and the body is a second brain. It remembers uh, what it happened to everything. it. It stores it in, Jill. And so that's why there are people who specialize in that. And that's one of the thir first things I thought of when you started talking, because you said, I'm trembling as I make this call. Mm -hmm. And so you have been deeply traumatized, and as you've said many times. But I would, I would really want to find experts in the area of um, the work like EMDR, Mm -hmm. somatic eye work which yeah. is eye movement uh I'm desensitization sorry, and, and reprocessing yes. mm -hmm. and somatic work and to really find people that are excellent in that right. additionally the right medication okay. could be helpful to help settle your uh, your, your, nervous your, your nervous system down because you can absolutely be on such high alert all the time that it is it, it is yeah. that you can't like process that you can't process right you don't come down mm -hmm. into an right. area where your adult brain That's can right. kick in and it can be re it can be reparative to be on the right medication yes i'm also thinking at some okay. point as an adjunct art therapy with mm -hmm. a very nurturing person it's not about the quality of the artwork, but it is another way. Yeah. And since you are an artist and artistic, and that's an important part of your life, that could be a good medium for you. And it's reclaiming. Correct. It's reclaiming yes. what was once yours. Mm -hmm. And and yes. we do need help, Hannah. When you've been through yeah. such a horrific experience, I, you're going to need help. You're going to need people that are coming alongside of you. Um, and and it's a process. And it sounds like just like what you said, Mylon. You know, sometimes we get help but it's not the right help um, and many times people will walk away from help thinking that there is no help and so um, if that made any sense at all I want you to know that there that the right help is out there we'll get you connected to somebody we're so glad that you called today Hannah I know that that helped uh, other people who are listening that may be in a similar situation we're glad that each of you joined us today. I'm so thankful for Jill and for Mylon and uh, just appreciate all the wisdom that you shared today. We hope all of you will join us again and we'll see you next time on New Life Live. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener supported ministry make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, thank you for watching New Life Live. You know, New Life Live is a Christian counseling program where we deal with the hard questions about life, relationships, kids, free choice, freedom of will, whatever. It's all right there on New Life Live every day, every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. If you want to call into the live broadcast, you can find the schedule on newlife.com or click the social media link right below. You can see every episode of New Life Live on the New Life YouTube channel. Watch it with a friend, watch it later. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss another episode. So if you want to listen on the go, download the app. The link is right below. And I hope if you need some information, if you want to get some help, you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And I'll see you next time.